Okay, we got the raceway reverse shift lever that goes up by the fuel tank to control reverse. Uh, makes a good neutral finder, helps you get in and out of reverse easier. We're going to be putting this on the patrol. I already have one on the 2008 Tourist. And I'm not going to worry about the two-wheel drive on the patrol with a, a double lever set or anything. If you want two-wheel drive, we'll reach back and change it. But uh, it is highly convenient to have reverse um, up next to the fuel tank. It just it just makes the whole bike a lot nicer to to work with here. So we're going to get this installed. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and install the reverse lever while the fuel tank is off the bike. Uh, makes it easier. You don't have to do that, but you, know, you do need to release the fuel tank and lift it up to get under here. But since the fuel tank is off, that's why I want to go ahead and do this. It'll just make life a lot easier. But you take this bracket off. In order to get this bracket off on the Tourist, I had to unbolt the coil and move it forward. I don't know if I'm going to have to do this here, but it has to do with the length of this bolt. Uh, looking at it, it looks like I probably will, but that was fairly easy. Didn't have to remove it. Uh, that comes off. The reverse shift lever has to come off, of course, and then the linkage from down here up to there will pass through this area and that will be kind of the the area where on the tourist it didn't work out it was either touching the pushrod tube or hitting the carburetor it was just real tight so on the tourist I ended up putting a little bit of a bend in the linkage rod which worked perfect and on the patrol I don't know if I'm gonna have to do that yet but we're about to find out okay we're getting this bracket off uh, there's 13 3 millimeter bolts. Wait a minute, that don't sound right. Oh, no, there's three 13 millimeter bolts. I'll get it right in a minute. Yeah, there's, there's, well, there's supposed to be, <laughs> it's supposed to be three 13 millimeter bolts. There are two, and these are nylon nuts, the nylon locking nuts on here, which is fine. Um, they just come off and there's a wire up here that'll also come off but I noticed this bolt up here uh, isn't like it is on the tourist it's actually two nuts locked together that's what it feels like yep and the bolt is a cap screw where on the tourist it was actually a nut on top which would let me hold it so that I could turn the lock bolt here um, I have I hope I'll be able to get this loose without any trouble. Otherwise, uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to hold that. I'll have to take this coil pack out further to get an Allen key into the top of it. This uh, ground wire here also has underneath it a kind of a star washer to bite in and make sure it makes good contact and a good ground. You gotta get that off too. Let's see if this is going to come loose because these gussets are on both sides blocking access. Oh yeah, the whole thing's turning. Great. Um, yeah. Should be able to at least unlock it. Now, what I have here, this is a Craftsman wrench. This is a 13 millimeter yeah, this is a northern tool wrench. Um, if you look at them, a high, the higher quality of the wrenches, the thinner the profile will generally be. Um, that's really what you're paying for is the quality of the steel. And you'll notice this thicker one, I can't get it on the bottom nut and still turn the, the top one. So I'm going to use the thicker one. Um, you know, I, I do use Craftsman wrenches for the most part because they're available. They do, have, they do have a warranty on them. I mean, I've, I've had good luck with them. They're not the highest quality tools, but they do the job. And then when I need two of the tool, <laughs> I generally will go get a cheap one. And you do get what you pay for. But if you've ever wondered why tools cost like they do sometimes that's part of the reason why is the quality of the steel in them. You, know, you can get you know a three dollar wrench or a thirty dollar wrench 
and it does make a difference, uh, especially if you have to make a living with your tools. Invest in some good tools. Don't don't fool around with dirt cheap tools. You're just kidding yourself in the long run. But you know, for for DIY and home mechanic craftsman, it does the job. There. I don't think they're the quality that they used to be. I mean, the craftsman tools that my father has from decades ago are far superior to craftsmen that you find today. But they're still better than some of these just cheap Chinese knockoff tools. Now, I am running into the same issue that I had last time. Uh, this bolt can't come out because it in fact, it runs into the coil. So, if I remember right, this is a 10 millimeter. Ah, there we go. We will have to stop that bottom one from turning. I think that's an Allen key. Yeah, that's an Allen key under there. So, let's take that out. Now, I realize some of these videos are longer. You can skip. Some of them are shorter. Uh, I realize people like both approaches. Um, some people, you know, like spending time with you and looking over your shoulder, seeing every step, every move. Some people just want the final, okay, what did you do? So I'll try to mix it up. And again, I, I'm not trying to teach anyone how to do anything. This is just what I am doing. And you know, use any of my advice at your own risk. Now on the tourist, the same trick may not work here. I was able to actually do it without taking the pack all the way off. I was able just to swing it forward. Get this bolt out. I'm going to try that again. See if I can get lucky here. There we go. Yep. And this is the bracket that comes off. And a lot of guys will actually use these brackets to fabricate their own reverse shift lever, which is fine. You can weld on it. Um, you know, I sent my other one off to someone that wanted to try that, so they can weld on the extra one. And if they get it wrong, you know, they've not destroyed theirs. But if they get it right, they can take theirs off and pass it along to the next person. But uh, got a bracket off here, and I'm going to wipe this out a little bit with a paper towel, clean it up and get the new bracket on there for the reverse shifter. Okay, now we're ready to put our new bracket in. It'll only go in one direction. And I'd point out at this point to go ahead, if you have your sidecar uh, on your rig, you might want to go ahead and put the handle in and install the bracket with the handle in. Because uh, you may find there's not enough room to get the handle in the bracket without moving your sidecar. So with no sidecar for us that's not a problem. The bracket simply slips in right here. There we go. And we got a rubber washer or gasket or bushing or whatever you want to call it. And I like to get this bolt in first because it's the most difficult to weasel back in there. So remember right, what I actually worked out was doing it this way. Okay, that was a bit of a wrestling match, but I did manage to do it. Um, just bit that down a little bit, pushed it as far forward as it could go, and managed to weasel that back in there. Your mileage may vary, so be prepared to have to deal with that. Then we got a rubber grommet and a washer on the back. 
that fits on here. That takes care of the sound dampening. And we'll go ahead and put one of these nuts back on. I'm not going to tighten it just yet because I still have these others to get on. A washer and a Nyla lock nut, star washer, a ground wire, a regular washer, and a lock nut. Now what I want to do is I want to tighten this top one first. I don't want to tighten these first because it may hold this uh, away or in a position and not allow it to tighten. We should tighten this top one first and then tighten these down. So let's get it first. Is snug it down so that they so that the rubber is not under stress. You're not squeezing it out or bulging it out, but you are holding it. That's still a little bit loose. Yep, I like that better. So I'm good with that. Now we get this other lock nut on the back of it. Nuts together and lock it in position. Now we're ready to tighten the two nylon nuts here. I want to pull this ground wire over so we're not bending it up. Now we got our bracket in place. Our reverse shift lever. We have the throttle cables right now going over the top of the bracket. Again, that may change. As I do that, there we go. We've got a lever in place now. That's good. Let's go ahead and put our coil pack back on like it should be. I went ahead to get a puller to get the reverse lever off. Uh, one thing I did notice about this transmission, a uh, little sloppy, um, but there's a lot of movement in the reverse shift lever. There doesn't appear to be any oil coming out. There's a lot of movement there more than on the other one. But uh, I'm going to ride it until it uh, won't ride no more before I do too much about that. Let's see if I can't get this shift lever off. The puller may be too large for the job. I don't know yet. I might be able to get it on there. Okay, I prefer not to pry on these because when you pry on them, you're actually pulling on the shaft in the transmission. So you've got to be careful about that. With a puller, you're actually pushing the shaft through the item. But generally, these just require a little bit of coercion. But it occurs to me if this shaft is moving back and forth, that if I put a little pressure back here, that's pulling the shaft off of its probably worn out bearings. I'm just going to tap it and take the uh, brute force approach and try to drive the shaft back through the lever. Let's see if I can get it off that way. There we go. Sometimes simple works. Okay, we got the lever off. So that much movement, I would think I would see a leak here, but it's really not. It's just dirt and grime, so maybe it's okay. Put a little T9 on there to lubricate that and make sure it slides on easier. I found you just have to kind of keep working with it and adjusting the rod and the position and basically don't put the nut back on to tighten it in place until you have the throw of the lever like you want it. And I did go ahead and route the accelerator cables underneath the bracket here. Again, this is just a kind of a loose fit. Of course, that's way, way off there. So, the leather's all the way back. 
We'll try that. And the levers all the way forward is there. Now, all this is subject to adjustment simply because uh, I don't have the tank on, I don't have all the uh, gear back on here, so I may have to take this off and adjust it, no big deal. Uh, back up so you can see the whole... Yeah, now you can see everything. You can see the hold this on, throw with the lever, and that should be a wrap right now. Curiously, I will say that uh, this is different than it was on the Tourist. I find that very curious. There's plenty of room here where on the Tourist there was not. And I tried it in this position. I tried it in every position uh, on the Tourist. When I put it in this position on the Tourist, it was actually banging against the transmission housing. There was no way to get it uh, enough clearance here. So I had to go to the outside. Um, to, it, 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 you know, I got it working. I had to bend it. But on the Patrol, I have to say that it's a much better fit. It's nowhere near close to the pushrod tube. So for this one, it's a good deal. I like it. Let's put the nut back on here. It's not a difficult install. The most difficult part is essentially getting this bolt in up here in the front of this bracket. That's the hardest part. And the reason you don't want to take this side, I'll show you here, if you can avoid it, you don't want to take this side of your coil off, is there's a bracket here that holds your uh, split uh, for your accelerator cable. And you can't really get in here that good. I, uh, you know, you got to get an Allen key to get in here. Not impossible, not hard, but if you can avoid it, um, you know, it's worth avoiding if you can. I do like the reverse shift lever kits that Raceway sells. They seem to be uh, of good quality, powder coated well, uh, engineered, maybe not the fanciest uh, around, but they do the job and they do it well. So. That's pretty much installed. The only thing we have left to do is to put the retainer washer on with the spring. Now this is what we have here. Now what I did on uh, Ursula, my tourist, is added more washers to it. I, I can show you that on mine back here. Uh, you can see I added more washers to it because it was very uh, flimsy and it was just very loose and the reverse shift lever itself is very loose so I just wanted to tighten that up that's an option so I'll put this one on and then put the cotter pin through there you go and uh, I don't even think I'm going to bend the cotter pin right now. I'm going to wait till I get the fuel tank on and make sure I don't have to pull this off and make any minor adjustments. Uh, just you may as well. I would say once you've done these, you're looking at about a half hour job, unless you're trying to show other people and use a camera and uh, deal with that. But uh, it's not bad at all. The 2010 Patrol is coming along. We should have it on the road, uh, I'm guessing, this weekend. Uh, two or three more days here, and um, yeah, I've got the carbs in, so it, it's it's looking good. All I got to do now is is get the tank, the airbox, everything back on, fuel it up, and it'll be ready to roll.